you know, I see, you know, it's in a black and white, man. Hey, you see that silver lining, man, right there? Okay, that's silver lining. Let's check it out. You see the heat coming from a jet right now? Look, you see, fifth dimensional thinking. I'll check this out. We got a, we got a brown stripes, man, right? See the airflow? That's the guesstimated airflow of where it's supposed to go on the plane, right? But that's uh, with the wind tunnel testing, you know? And then now we tried the sensor stuff, you know? But we'll go and figure out why it wasn't exactly the way it should be. But it's still good, you know? So we got a red and white jet across over there, right? You know, for the red, white, and blue, you know? We're trying to get this green new deal, you know? We got the, we got all this information, man, but uh, there's so much information, we're like, man, you know, uh, we can't fit all that in one box, you know? What are we going to do with all that? I said, I don't know, man. Let's go over here, man, and have some fun, okay? He says, look, we got a green and brown and white, you know? Hey, did you get a green? Huh? How about, you need some more green stuff? Oh, we got some trees over here, man. Hey, how about this, man? Look, we got a big yellow line. It's like a speed bump, you know? It's like a Wednesday, man. You know, Wednesday, we're like, hold on, man. Hey, you got that heat gun ray thing, man? It says, let's hop over. Do the hop, man. See? Now, they got a music for that, too, man. And it says, we got Motown. Motown music. Get it? Motown? You know, they, they mowed everything down until there was nothing left. Okay? Motown music, okay? So they got that lesson. Then we got rock and roll, man. Hey, you know, rock and roll, like the, the rock, you know? Hey, built Ford tough like a rock, man, like the rock of Jesus. Just educate, save the United States, you know? And they say, what do you mean? Well, you know, it's uh, saving universal sources, you know? Everything we need to put everything together, you know? It's like a big computer, man. You know what I mean? Hey, you need some sunshine on a cloudy day? We got some sunshine on a cloudy day, man. Somebody says, nah, you tell them, hey, what you talking about? Jesus and all those veterans already wrote all those words in red, man. They paid for it in blood, man. Let's see if we can get some more cloud coverage, okay? Hey, did you put your navy khakis on today, huh? He says, man, I tell you what. Let's go over here. They said, man, how we get these people to pay attention? Well, you know, if you could get a little more creative, man, it'd be kind of cool. I says, well, you're always so serious. Why so serious? You know, I says, well, those people are going, why you're so serious, man? I had no idea what we're talking about. So he said, maybe get creative, man. You know, if it hurts, I'm sorry about that, man. Maybe we'll get us some seven churches, man. Seven churches? Yeah, man. You know, heaven's elect, man. Revival team, you know, for the zombies. You guys awake yet? Okay, we'll try to get the seven churches, man, together with the state of affairs, you know, because uh, we need some more white clouds up there, man. Hey, if you're too busy puffing on the drugs, man, and doing white clouds, you know, can you look up and see that you're burning up all the trees, right? Hey. We need these trees too, you know? I says, man. I says, all right, let's go out here, man. Okay, let's tell them a little more about aerodynamics. You know, some of these jets, man, they've been, man, over-engineering, under-engineering, re-engineering. They're trying to get all this stuff for the atmosphere, you know? And uh, maybe we can adjust the atmosphere to adjust the atmosphere to adjust the response from the mechanics and computer and artificial intelligence you know aided piloting stuff like the flight computer stuff you know like a, the four-legged uh, Chinese uh, you know helicopter you know I did a review on Amazon it's pretty groovy man they're like man I never seen anybody give a review on a flight machine like that from a little toy you know quad chopper you know I says well you seen a quad core processor you know quad core man quad core Okay, you need two people, you need 10 commandments, I'll tell you what, you need an engineer, and you need a weather, man, you need a good weather, right? And if you ain't good weather, you need a good understanding, huh? So when they say, you know, it's kind of hot today, the sun's out, it's evaporating, man, and the heat, the heat causes the air to rise and compress, Can you tell that to one of those Army guys, or those Air Force guys, or those Navy pilots? You know, hey, the heat is rising. And when the heat rises, it causes the air to compress. Hey, man, you got a cold compress? You know, this test pilot, man, I just broke my wrist. You know, my rotator cuff, you know, on my shoulder. I mean, I need to get uh, a cold compress for that because it hurts after that crash. You mean when the hot air rises, it doesn't compress? 
No, when the hot air rises, it doesn't compress. That's why all those test pilots, they say, hey man, my shoulder hurts, man. You got a compress for that? I need a cold compress because, you know, if I had a little cooler air up there, it might have compressed. But uh, when hot air rises, man, even if there's water there, you still get some uh, malformities out there because uh, when hot air rises, it doesn't compress. It opens up like a nuclear reaction. Hey, can you put some salt in the air while you're at it, man? You know, if you put some salt in the air, it'll cause it to separate a little bit more. So some of that water that made it up there that filtered out, that fresh water can fill in the gaps and then we make a clouds. And then it might even start to rain after it builds up a little bit, you know? So when the uh, hot air rises, it doesn't compress. It brings stuff down. Okay, now we talk about the desert. Hey, you know, I got uh, some engineers in some of these warehouses, man. They make a lot of airplanes and they can't figure out why their airplanes aren't flying the way they should in the desert. I says, well, you know, if we had a proper airport, proper airport, well, you know, if you understood some of those uh, scientific structures, you know, hey, look at my birdies telling you too, man. See the two little birdies that told me? He says, man, you know, you look at these scientific structures, they go, man, maybe if we built this like this or that like that, you know, maybe it'll work, you know? But he says, I'll tell you what, I'll go out here, I'll look at this plane, I says, maybe, uh, maybe I'll get some salt in there, man. Hey, did I ever tell you hot air rises and compresses? Okay, can you tell me why your engine sometimes gets really hot? Well, if you fly fast or you dive, you know, you get an air compressing in the engine compartment and maybe it'll cool off, you know, but it runs real hot sometimes. Hey, please keep your oil fresh and uh, make sure you change your coolant, man, because if it gets real hot in there and it overheats and uh, you bust a hose or something, you're done. You know why? I looked at a fuselage the other day on a trailer. It got the intake at the bottom. I'm like, hold on. If hot air rises and compresses, what do you mean? You mean those little Cessnas are flying around and it didn't have the intake on the top? No, it didn't have the intake on the top. Because if hot air rises and compresses, then it should, uh, you know, cool and drop back down and create a resistance, right? And then maybe it compressed there. So they took a Cessna up in the air and they said, I got two little holes at the bottom to cool the engine and it compressed, 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 build up pressure to push the heat out in like a heat pump. But, you know, if it fall down in there, maybe, you know, but air don't rise and compress. Now maybe if they put something at the top to bring it in and drop it down, it might cool and push the air out a little bit faster, maybe like an outtake and a thing. And I says, well, we did that on this one jet, man, and we put the exhaust on the side. But where was the intake, huh? Where was the intake, huh? Did they plan on that? No, because some weather forecaster said, hey, the, the hot air rises and compresses. So, you know, if it compresses in there and it gets thicker, you know, it's going to condensate, you know, and then we're going to have some condensation or something, you know? I was like, oh, man, that's why they got all their engine stuff and engineering wrong. Yeah, it's pretty screwed up. Okay, let's go over here. Well, we had a Top Gun movie. Where do you see Top Gun 2, huh? No, they don't put that kind of education in some of those southern books. It's like some Chinese wisdom. Like some samurai stuff. You know, like Uncle Sam? Or I? Was it M or me? M or me? M or me? Samurai. Saving American media? I know. Yeah, I know. Official revival? Yeah, I know. Intelligence? Yeah. Oh, we could do it. Hey, my bird just landed across the field. Okay? White bird over there and that pile of stuff. So let's move away from the pile of stuff with the bird trying to tell me. Since we're going to go over here, okay? Oh, see, I knew I could find a way to word that nicely. Told you. Okay, here we go. Ready? Wind's blowing from here. Okay, got a nice moisture. Pilot's flying. 
We got the simulators, man. <sighs> they got all this data that says, hey, when air rises, it compresses flying through the simulator. See, now I knew, man. I, I flew a simulator, man. I, no, no, it's got the vacuum gauges and stuff, you know. I fly this other simulator. I'm like, this is not right. I keep going up. I, it's like I stall. I come down and land it, no problem. I stall, I land it, no problem. But, you know, they tell them, how do you rise and compress this? I says, no, it doesn't, man. No, it doesn't. Look. If hot air rises and compresses, I take this, I put the air in there, I compress it, compress it, and then I got a hot air coming out that's compressed. I'm like an engine, you know? Now I come out, and what happens? Well, the hot air comes out of the engine, and it's hot air compresses, right? Well, then, if hot air compresses, I'm flying through the desert, man. Why I got to make a shape to compress the hot air? Make a hot air come out the back, and then it does what? It expands, and then the cool air, if there's any moisture there, enters into it and gives me an extra little push in my jet engine, you know? So I look up here, and I say, you know, a hot air rise, and it ain't compressing by itself, brothers, okay? It got to have some kind of external something force on it. So hot air spreads apart. It ain't going to compress and let this uh, some kind of atmosphere up there. You lose the atmosphere. <sighs> Goodbye. So they say, hey, you see that ocean out there? We try to get some of the ocean up into the atmosphere, moved around. We got a lot of science into it. And we really need that ultralight aircraft approval from the FAA. Can I explain any more scientific stuff today? Or I got to beam me up Captain Scotty for Captain Kirk, huh? I mean, what do I got to do here, you know? I says, man, I'll tell you what. This guy, he's like, uh, you know, remember he was giving me the review? Look, I got my tail flap here, okay? And I got it pointed to the right, you know? Because I need everybody to turn to the right direction, okay? You see? I don't know if you can see it. It's, it's painted black, just like the information, man. They're like, man, information's all messed up, man. So uh, everybody's in the dark ages, man. You see that flap right there on that plane? You got to curve to the right, right? Because we got a bunch of flaps here and there. We got sensors all over the place. We got this. We got that flap. We got this flap. We got, uh, you know, we got the... Uh, we got uh, airplane landing wheels, we got pressure gauges, all kinds of stuff, man. We got all this science, man. And if we'd only known that when air rises, it doesn't compress by itself, maybe we'll make a jet engine, okay? And then we we'll make a jet engine, we go, well, if, uh, if you compress it, it comes out. You know, that's a lot of compression, and uh, when it comes out, uh, it's gonna spread real fast, it's gonna create a vacuum, and then it's gonna collapse. And you're gonna have a pulsating effect. And then maybe that pulsating effect, maybe a earth magnetism, you know, maybe it'll bring a water down or something. I don't know, man. But I tell you what, if I had something on the ground, maybe putting some of that stuff up in the air, some compressed air, you know, then maybe that compressed air will rise up off of that and some of that stuff will come in, right? And then maybe when I go through there and that stuff will bring in, and I got a little more push when I'm lifting off or landing. And you know, if I put a proper helicopter blade on that, man, and maybe uh, I get that engine and that uh, stuff placed just right, and maybe I use it just with one helicopter blade instead of two, and I get the hollow space right, and I start using some of that science with that science, and maybe uh, we get that little air pad made with those, uh, you know, those uh, uh, pyramid structures, you know, where you can lean through and turn and, you know, like a little you know, board of directors, you know? A board of directors, yeah, like a board of directors, man, directing the airflow of how I can land that ultralight, man. And maybe I take that ultralight and I make a, maybe we make a, a ultralight, uh, and we come down, we test it, right? We go up, we see that it's doing that, and we're doing like a bouncing a basketball and aiming it, and we figure out which way it's pushing us so we can learn about how to turn the proper pyramid and direction and point those waves the correct way for the waves that we can't see. Now we got a little controller board, like a keyboard, for the computations of the computer that's up there in the sky that we can't see. Huh? Anybody think about that? Hey, I got my buddies over here, man. They're at the Craig Air Center, man. He says, my jet, man. Do you see my jet? Do you see that plane over there? See that jet over there? I tell you what. You see that learning curve? The superstar, man. Hey, how about a hangar office leasing? Fuel tie downs, aircraft charter, aircraft management. Hey, man, we got a CAC. You see? 
Craig Air Center, and maybe we talk to Commander in Chief, and we say, "Hey, man, we need some megahertz over here, man, because uh, we need a Sterling Air School, uh, we need a flight control tower, right? Why do we need that kind of research? Because then the flight control towers could actually talk to the other flight control towers. They could talk to the other flight control towers. They can go all the way across the ocean, bounce it off a satellite like a like a bird on a wire." See, bird on the wire is taking off and flying, man. It's like, uh, and then they talk to those flight towers over there in those foreign countries, they can understand each other. And then we go, man, that's why we did an international space station. It says maybe we could bounce that off of that and send that over there. And then maybe, you know, and then we under the ground, flatten it out. That way, once you make some adjustments, then you get the whole system time to do something. And then uh, you make a bigger one and a bigger one. And then you go, man, and now you got your wind breaks when you build cities, right? In between the forestry, this is what the tourism system for. We got a city, a forest, a city, a forest. Like a checkerboard from God, man. Hey, you wanna play chess? I put my pawn over there, man. All right, I put my other pawn there, put my other pawn there, and I'm gonna put my other pyramid pawn over here. We're gonna rotate them and lean them and see what it's gonna do to the weather system. It's a lot better than just trying to push stuff around with the big pyramids that were left there thousands and thousands of years ago. Continental drift through the continents, you know. They've shifted the land masses. The water's come up more. Hey, some of that water that's supposed to be up there is in the ocean. We used to have more land and more grass and more trees, but you know, they're gone, so the stuff evaporated and then it went up there and then it rained down and it's filling the ocean up, filling the ocean up. And that was the great flood. Everybody didn't believe the Bible, but they said, hey, did you know there was a flood and it flooded over? It says, never again will I flood. Why? Because if you don't pay attention and you run out of air up there, you know, which is the water, the atmosphere, atomized. Hey, we got everybody saying, you guys uh, need some wisdom? i tell you what. Hey, oil and water, man. It's oil. It's medicated, man. No, if I can't breathe and I'm going to drown, I mean, I can atomize that stuff and get some oil in my lungs, man. I just oil my lungs, coat my lungs, and then I still can't breathe. And maybe I die off with no wisdom in my brain. Oh, this is okay. I tell you what. We get all that water in the ocean. We need to figure out how to get some of that back up there. And you do one of those ultralight research things, man, with the pyramid stuff. You spin it around. It's like dial on a dial. Remember the Rotary Club? You know, that's like the aliens trying to tell you. We used to have a phone system with a rotary dial. Remember the rotary dial? Oh, most people on that. They got a touchscreen phone now, like a Star Trek. Hey, Star Trek said we're going to have talking computers. Here you go, talking computers. You're going to have tricorders. You try a quarter in a phone machine and push the buttons. Pretty cool. We had a rotary dials too. You know why? Muscle memory. So you can remember. If God was standing on the face of the planet and he had like uh, one hand here and another guy inside there and another guy inside there and one guy up there and another guy flying the plane and we got another guy in a tower over there and another guy with a tower there trying to make trees. We should tell you what. I got my rotary dial with my pyramids, man, and my three-dimensional, fifth-dimensional thinking, and that's for infinity and beyond. And I'm going to say, man, I'm going to rotate this one like this, turn it this way or that way. Now you stay there, and then I'm going to turn over here, and I'm going to say, I'm going to do like Superman, man, up in the Ice Age stuff, man, because this is what we were trying to do. We roll this around here and tilt it this way. Maybe we'll get the heat come down and push and get a wind and land our craft, okay? And I says, okay, I go over here, turn this one, and point it this way or that way. And I says, man, and now it's coming down, and I see that what it does... And the shift of things, right? And then I, I can now learn how to fix the atmosphere without using all that oil and fuel on those big generators blowing wind around that we're going to run out of, uh, you know, unrenewable resources anyways. And, you know, even with that, you know, if you run out of this, okay, that's unrenewable. You know, you run out of this, that's unrenewable because all that's gone and people start fighting and warring and beating over the head. Hey, I'm going to stone you with a rock, man. I'm going to throw a rock at you and like a bunch of animals, man. And you look at the monolith and they go, man, that's what that movie 2000, you know, you know, the space movie, Space Odyssey 2000. Hey, you got that Hal yet, man, that Hal 2000? Oh, he had a three hour tour. You know, the guy goes out on a boat, you know, for a three hour tour. Oh, for the Trinity tour. Oh, Bible Adventures of America. Bible Adventures of America? 
Yeah, man. He goes on a three-hour tour and he never comes back because he got amnesia. So New York said, I don't think so. Put him on a boat. We got a Navy flag on it. We'll sell him under the Brooklyn Bridge if we got to. And when he get down there, have him go over and tell Mississippi about it and come back. We'll pick his boat up with a hurricane, drop it in front of church so the church will know. And says, hey, church, you see that boat? It's time to get our stuff together. And he go, oh, man. And he says, I'll tell you what else we'll do. We'll send them to New Mexico, talk to the aliens a bit, go over to California, tell them, turn all your stuff off, man. Build mountains around those wind machines, okay? Because they're not doing any good. And we'll talk to Egypt. And we're done talking to Egypt, you know, then we'll call up our Japanese and Chinese friends because, you know, JC, Jesus Christ, man, can we get some technology? And it says, man, why are you working on technology? We're working on logistics of the mechanical aspects of it. And while we're at that, we got this other guy who's going to work on the psychology. Center for Disease Control for the whole world. And when we get all that put together, then we're really gonna start a party. That's the grand old party. Oh, you know, for my grandparents, their grandparents, their grand, everybody's grandparents, everybody's grandparents. Hey man, the old people, the good understanding nations. Hey, like our old Indian tribes, they got together, man, and says, man, we need a top gun, man. We need something to blow, you know, blow everybody's minds out, man. They clear their minds out, man. Blow them away, man, and get some clouds over there to the other side of the country if we need to. And it says, man, you sending Indian smoke signals right now with that alien Indian technology? All over the world, man. That's what we're trying to do. Can we talk to the FAA? Hey, can somebody call the FAA and say, hey, we need a little bit of approval down here? Huh? We even got a big green tractor. I mean, what else we need, man? Hey, I tell you what, you wait until tomorrow. We'll have something else for you. We got a guy out there, man, like a Star Wars guy, man. He said, did you read that? I got a yellow shirt on for some sunshine. Didn't you hear that song, man, from Motown? I got sunshine on a cloudy day. See what I mean? Hey, we're pushing clouds on the ground, man. You see that? Okay, we got to plant some crops, man. We need some approval. Hey, what about some federal education funding, man? You know, can we get a federal education enlightenment? I don't know, man. It looked like we got a pretty good school started here, man. You mean the entire state of Florida is making an educational system? Well, somebody said we didn't have a plan. So we called some of those guys from the mountains and we said, can we get some of those vets together? Those are valuable educational trainers, man. I tell you what, they didn't like the military until now. Now everybody's like, man, can I join? Where do I sign? I says, man, we got recruiting offices all over the place. Well, we had that How 2000 thing with the alien stuff that was going on, and we had to have a bunch of negotiations. So they all put like key code Fort Knox locks on the doors, the little key code stuff. And it says, man, if you call us and make an appointment, man, we'll work us something out, you know? I mean, we want to fly high, man. You know, that's like an angel right there. That's an angel flying right there in the clouds, man. You know? And it's like, man, hey, we made a telephone pose with telephone lines. And then the birds are like, you guys didn't like that? I'll tell you what, we make a wireless. You want to talk to God wireless? We had a bird on a wire, man. Now we got a bird in the sky. You see what I mean? You got to talk to God, man, and maybe a few Indians every now and then. And God forbid you don't talk to the old people. They shouldn't have to sit in their homes and not be able to go out and enjoy all this cool stuff we're building and making. You want to make somebody impressed? Hey, we got a new school, old school, and middle school, okay? That's the Trident Services, man, you know? Trident Services, you know? Try them services, you hear it now? Try them for services, you know? You go, what do you mean? Well, we got the old people, okay? We got the young people, and then we got the middle class, man, you know? You gotta watch out for everybody, man. It says, man, so the old people can see what these people are building, and these people can see what these two people are building, and we go, what do you mean? That's a triangulation, man. You know, we got a triangulation, man. And then you get a three like that. We go, man, that's what we're talking about, man. Wisdom. Hmm? You get a little blurry or what, man? Let me see if I can clear that up some for you. Hold on. Whoa, man, look at that jet, man. Hey, maybe, maybe I'll call these people up. And we'll get a tour of the jet tomorrow. We'll see what they can arrange, man. You know, they got like a half of a, a, a David Star right there, man. Maybe we'll check that out. Yeah, man, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Tell you what, man. I hear a jet warming up over there right now. You hear it? I hear it's like, shh. Ooh, the sun's getting brighter, man. Oh, the sun's getting brighter, man. You see it brighten up? Man, that's like some Indian stuff, man. I'm telling you, man. 
Gotta get AAA services from America. That's in God we trust right there, man. You wonder why we put it on the back of our money, man. It should be beyond the shadow of a doubt, man. Hey, there's no shadow on me today, man. That sun's bright. Look at this. Whoa, man. I want to look up to God. Anybody want to raise their hands? Hey, you know, I see a, I see a plate from New Jersey over there, man. There's a New Jersey guy right here doing some telepathy right now. He goes, raise your hands, man. From New York to Chicago, man. Come on, raise your hands, man. Hey, we're having a concert for God, man. See that stuff, man? Look, he's got the he's got a chopper on an assembly pad right now, man. See? See that old guy, man? Look at that. Got a really old guy on an assembly pad right now, man. You see? Old folks, man. O L. Old folks, man. You see? That's an official love of valuable education. He's like, man, you see my helicopter, man? Didn't you see that movie with the train? They had that little tiny helicopter that's flying real fast. It comes down and it's all like a Mission Impossible, man. You know, and it's like, and he flies it through the tunnel. That might be the actual guy right there to like arrange that stunt, man. I don't know. They do a lot of weird stuff over here at the Space Center. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's got it on assembly pad. He says, man, I'm ready to make another chopper too. We got test pilots, man. Come on, let's do this stuff. Hey, I got some blocks up under these tires, man. Okay, boom, look at that. Maybe we'll get a tour of that. Hey, I got to call ahead, man. Hey, they said call ahead, man. Call ahead, maybe we'll get a tour for the chopper tomorrow, man. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? I don't know who he is, man, but uh, it might be like some of those Star Wars secret alien angel aliens, you know? I don't know. But it looks cool, man. I mean, he's got it on a tow pad, you know? He says, tow truck? What are you talking about? This is an escort, man. You see? You got the... We got the chopper on a pad and everything, man. We need some volunteers. Hey, who volunteered for Civil Air Patrol lately, man? Hey, you know where that building is? It's right on down here at the end of this street, man. Right across from the Sterling Flight Center. Oh, the Sterling Flight Center? Yeah, man, you go to the Sterling Flight Center, you know it could be one anywhere. It might even be called Sterling Flight Center. It might be somewhere else in America, but you got a Sterling Flight Center right across from the... Oh, it's the Civil Air Patrol. Yeah, and over here you got like a... You know, all these different people landing and flying different kind of jets so you can kind of do like an inspection. And he's like, man, what you talking about? You can't have inspection without an inspector, man. He says, man, look at it. Not only are we the inspectors, man, but the inspectors drive their stuff out on an assembly pad for the other inspectors for the up and coming, man. Hey, you go on the school. You want to be a design? You want to fly a jet? We don't care what you want to do, man. Just look over here, man. Maybe we need some new ideas for a flight tower. So we got a flight tower, you know, school over there next to the flight tower. So we got a flight tower school. Okay, we got an epic school for fuel and research for that. And then uh, we got a Sterling Flight School over here, man. You know, they're learning, you know, and always uh, re educating themselves. We got a Civil Air Patrol teach you about airplanes and civics. You know, maybe a little FAA stuff over there. You could renegotiate some of that. And then uh, we got some research and develop in a secret warehouse over here, like the Warehouse 13 kind of thing, with an experimental ultralight craft that needs some FAA approval, man. It's like if we could get some wisdom from here. To that flight tower, you know, and from that flight tower to Civil Air Patrol, and from Civil Air Patrol to the FAA, wherever they might be, man, to bring some cool stuff back to the Sterling Flight Center Training Center, and then maybe people take a vacations, right, and they want to learn more about it, they go to a holiday aviation, man, take a tour of all this cool stuff that's going on down here, man. I go, man, did you watch Star Wars, man? Okay, we're just trying to keep it low-key, man. We don't want anybody to know about all our cool stuff yet, man. We gotta get some education out there. Look at this guy, he's like, man, okay, first, can we start with the helicopter, okay? All right, look, we've done a lot of stuff, okay? All right, look, I'm driving away on the tow cart. I'm gonna go back to the Star Wars hangar. It's secret, it's underground somewhere. So I'm gonna park out this thing, get in my car, and I'm gonna go talk to the guys, and maybe we'll talk to the other guys, and maybe we'll work out a deal, you know? And it says, but while you're at it, can you tell them about the flight tower stuff again? Oh yeah, we need to do that stuff so we can get the flight towers talking. Not just for that, but for the weather stations, you know, because the weather stations need to talk to these guys, and these guys need to talk to weather stations, so that when we get more research from that kind of ultra lightweight stuff, for lightweight winds and figuring out stuff that's not going to affect the atmosphere in a bad way like atomic bombs and crazy shit that they did in the old days maybe we get those guys um to talk to those guys to talk to those guys and those guys talk to those guys and those guys talk to 
the guys that do like the weather machine stuff man and helping them rebuild different kind of you know uh new technology we don't just need new jets and new planes and new helicopters maybe we need alternative energy sources for our weather control machines and we go man well you know the big alien race is something that left a long time ago left a bunch of those pyramids one in egypt one in south america one here one there let y'all know you know even a brick a brick a big brick place here or there can make a different change up there so we make a smaller version of it with a lightweight aircraft for an experiment you know and then uh you know like iron eagle you know mr kirk uh you know kirk jr miss you know captain kirk and captain kirk jr you know might keep his big mouth shut eh hmm? and make a cool uh videos you know yeah it's pretty cool huh yeah man i tell you you watch the iron eagle give me some loving man and they said, man, I need this flight tower, okay, over here to give them some loving. I need them to give them some loving so they can give them some loving to the Civil Air Patrol. Civil Air Patrol can give them some loving. And then they can give uh, these guys some loving. And then these guys can give these guys some loving. And those guys can give those guys some loving. And they can give the weather guys, you know, some loving. And the weather guys can give those guys some loving, you know. And they can give the local high schools and communities some loving. And then everybody together can give the churches some loving. And the churches can give all these people some loving. And everybody just love everybody. And be like, man, Iron Eagles came down out of the sky, man. Like, give me some loving, man. You know what I mean? Now you understand. It's like I've been playing that song over and over again. I was like, man, well, you know, if you could make a rainbow, you know, like a with the right water structure, you know, and the sun comes out, starts shining, goes through the water structure, and it, it, it's like a prism across, you know, you got a spectrum disorder, here we go, and we take a whole spectrum, move it all the way across the sky, and uh, you make a big old rainbow, and I says, man, yeah, it's like a bridge over troubled water, man, to get through the deserts, you know? And I says, man, once we get through the deserts, man, and they go, man, that sounds like pretty cool, man. He says, well, we get the flight towers talking to each other, that way they don't forget to put their landing pads away. <laughs> Then you watch Superman. Every time he got done with the little crystals, this one, that one, he was like, he put them away, right? And now, so while you're doing your research, and this is what people forgot, man, a star of David, you know, while you're doing your research, you're supposed to take the readings, and when you take off, and when you 